So, uh, game set and match. Net, I guess I, I can't quarrel with your with your conclusion here. If I were cutting the cord uh, and I said, "Okay, now what do I do?" My number one default choice would be Netflix. Easy. Not even a question. I mean, Netflix is what the old bundle was, all all in one service. So it you know it has something for everybody. It cuts across every demographic. And there really are very significant growth drivers, including, you know, what, sort of what you're intimating, which is their engagement is so strong. Yeah, their engagement is strong. How is the crackdown on password sharing going? I'm asking for a friend here. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. They've had really good growth since they started cracking down, on, you know, the, the password sharing crackdown. But it feels like there's a long way to go. They've said several quarters. Most people, anecdotally, that we speak to haven't haven't been touched yet, so it does feel like there's still a, a fairly decent runway from password sharing crackdown. Um, there's also a runway. I mean, just think about how many you know broadband homes there are in the world and how many connected TVs there are. There, there you know, there's this a very long runway for subscriber growth, and they have the content. A couple of years ago, there there was, as I'm recalling, you can correct me on this uh, if I'm incorrect. There was a concern that Netflix was spending so much on new content generation, some of which has paid off beautifully, but some of which, you know, it's a hit or miss business. But now, its top ten list has been dominated, you say, by third party content, which can't cost them as much as original content generation. How does this? play into their current profitability picture and into their future profits. Excellent point. Um, we, you know, there, the underlying drivers in, in the media and entertainment sector are, are all really positive for Netflix. For one, viewers continue to move from linear to streaming, um, so that's a positive. The, they do dominate, their, their own content for television viewing is, is actually doing very well. But if you look at their the third-party acquisitions they have in film, in particular, they're do, it's, it's amazing. You know, they're, they're just engagement is really strong, and they dominate most of the streaming charts. So the trend, you know, for for years, a lot of the studios, the traditional studios, pulled back content and only kept it in their own walled garden, wouldn't sell to Netflix or anyone else. That's opening up. It, it just didn't work. Warner Brothers Discovery has way too much content to put on their on Max. And Universal is selling movies, Sony selling movies. So the ability to get third party content, yes, it's lower cost, but it's also quicker to get on onto the schedule. You don't have all of that production time. And they're known it's known content, so you don't have to market it that much. So it's it's like a win win. It's a win for the studios because they're selling content, but clearly a win for Netflix because they're getting access to top quality content. At, lower prices than it would cost for them to produce on their own. 